Yeah, like I was saying, like, I don't tell this. I told it. I tell it now a little bit, you know, because it's part of my testimony. But it's really hard. You don't want people to think you're crazy or whatever. But God has never spoken to me much. And I think he did twice. Once when I was really, 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 like, in a really dark, dark place, like, dark at night. And an angel or a bird appeared on my refrigerator, you know, and I had to look again. Cause I was like, wait, you know? So I tried to look from every angle to see if it would happen again. And I never have seen it again. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that was telling him telling me to hold on. Okay. And then the other time he spoke to me and he may have before, like he sends me messages. If I ask for something or something like that, or I'm asking for advice or something, I'll definitely get something saying like, you know, not yay or nay or anything like that, but you know, you may see a scripture or something or hear something that you don't really hear that's related to you. But anyway, this particular day, Corey was in the, we're in the kitchen and we're, we're fumbling around. And me and him, I don't know, we just talk a lot on the phone, which is really cool, remind me of high school. Um, but he's talking to me, he's telling me how he's going to make my life better. And he did, just not in the way that he was, you know, arrogantly thinking, you know what I mean? Um, but I remember like thinking he's an ass, not an ass, but like, he's not, you know, I don't know, you know, he's mean or something, you know what I'm saying? Like he's being cocky and he's mean and I don't know about this. So I was thinking to myself, I'm about to hang up this phone. I'm about to hang up and either talk to him later or I think I'm just going to like let this be a friendship or whatever. Like, you know, just whatever, date him and see what happens. But like not really. I was telling God I'm about to hang up basically and, um, and let this be. And a voice came across and said, stick with him. And I automatically said, no, he's mean. Like, I don't even know, like in my head, like he's talking, he's still talking, Corey's doing whatever. So like, I mean, this is like all happening in my head and it's kind of like weird, you know? And it's, and I'm like, and I immediately not even thinking about it, just reply like, no, he's mean. And he said, it's not gonna be what you think. And that was it. And everything's home back in and that was it. And I don't know if he meant like, I was thinking like now looking back on it and now like I never told him about it, you know, like I think it made it harder for me and like going through whatever I'm going through, I pushed him away more <laughs> because God came and told me about him like, oh my God, <laughs> God been a person to be mean and not supportive. Like, I don't know. So I guess it's what he meant by it's not going to be. <clears throat> what you think it's gonna be, you know, but now we're not together. And as you know, like I lost everything, including him. And um, which bring me into the other thing I want to talk to you about, and I think we'll end out with that one. But um, yeah, that like, I spoke to you about it and you were telling me how that was so powerful. And it was so funny because when you said, when I told you about it, um, you said, you got his number. <laughs> No, I can't call him. <laughs> you gotta call me. <laughs> but it's it's just it's funny. Um but yeah, that's like the only time that God I don't know, like he had may have spoke to me before. Oh, last night it well, he didn't speak to me, but it's so weird. I was, you know, yesterday was eleven eleven. Mm -hmm. And um I'm sitting across the street with um, my friends and them across the street, like we normally do. And they're talking or whatever. So I kind of zone out and I'm just looking around, just looking, cause it's like a beautiful night. It's warm. It was warm. It was like 70 degrees outside last night, but it was raining. So um, how about I look across? Oh, I wish I could show you it to my phone. I look across and through the trees, it's a heart. Oh. <laughs> I never noticed before. And then I look again and it's like a bunch of hearts. And then it's like two birds. I don't know if I see this. I don't know. I could, I'm an artist. I don't know if I just, you know, but it was weird. 
And then guess who else initials was in the thing? Who? I don't know. It was two initials in the thing. I don't know what it means. I didn't really tell her. So it was K. And then I don't know if it was a heart. Was a, I don't know if it's a love sign for her, so I don't want to, you know, did you see, did you get the letter? Yeah. Okay. So that was cool. Yeah, that was cool. And, and I love it when the Lord shows up and does stuff like that. I think I told you when we talked before how, uh, and that was him, by the way. That was the Lord speaking to me. And so he speaks to us in subtle ways. We don't always hear an audible voice, very seldom. We don't always hear it that way, but he'll let us know because you get this peace, this calmness that you get when he speaks. So, and I'm, I'm pretty sure even though you were in that trance, Paul calls it a trance, um, you were in that trance just you and God at that moment. The world was gone and there was just you and God. So yeah, he was speaking to you. Um, and, and I want to go back to what you said. I said, did he use it at his number? Because sometimes, now God's not going to hold the fact that you didn't hold on against you. Because he's a merciful, he's a good you God. think? Oh my God. But I try he's to pray now and say, you know, it's okay. Because, you know, I'd rather... I listened this it was this saying i'm not you can finish don't forget your thought it was i was watching this movie the other day and like you said you know it was like weird stuff and in the movie she kept saying um i i rather i rather for it have had to happen for me to never remember it it was, it was a cool saying it was like something like it's, it was pretty much saying i rather have the memory of it happening than for it to never happened at all. I rather for it, I rather for it had to happen for me not to, I rather to miss that it happened than it not happened at all or something like that. You know, it was saying like, I, you know, like don't miss, don't miss that it's gone because, you know, it was a good moment basically. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Like remember the goodness in it or whatever, like, so, but yeah, but go ahead, finish. I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You were telling me um, how you, when I said, do you have his, do I have his number? And you were like, God is not going to punish me. Oh yeah. He's not going to punish not, you for um, not doing, listening. For not listening. For not listening. We don't know what that really meant. When he said, you're not. It's not what you think. Maybe it's not what you think. Maybe he was saying, yeah, he's not me, but it's not what you think. Maybe you're thinking, oh, well, I'm done with this. I'm leaving. And he's saying, it's not what you think. Or maybe he was saying, because you were so into this guy, he, it's not what you think. So either way, you got to pray and ask God to. But why would he tell me to stick with them? Well, I don't know. You got to ask God and he will answer. I think, I think it's one of the two things just because I know him and it wasn't what I thought. You know, I thought like we were so cool together. There was nothing that can really like, you know, like it was nothing that was wrong with us. Like we got along great. We were cool together, like perfect little couple, both power people, you know, both at a point in our lives where we're kind of starting over. Our story was kind of the same where we both had kids like earlier and we only had one, you know, so we're able to start a new family together. You know, like he was in um, real estate, which, you know, I was getting into real estate at the time, you know, and he was starting a new company. I was starting over new. So it was kind of like divine timing. I just didn't understand why God always make things a little difficult for me. You know, he don't just send the husband, he'll send the husband in the, the, you know, Corey gets sick and then, or it's always a difficult thing. You know what I'm saying? So I, I was thinking he was either saying one or two things. Either it's not what I think, whereas I'm thinking it's gonna be this fairy tale that we're gonna run off into the sunset and we're not gonna have a difficult time. 
or it's not what I think like right now, how I think it's over and done, but that person may be for me. You know what I'm saying? Like God may be saying, all right, send your husband. Like I told you, I went to try to get a, um, a reading, a, a psychic reading and um, how God kind of wouldn't let it happen. Mm -hmm. It was weird. Like it was kind of already saying, like I already gave you your answers. Like didn't already tell you what I said. <laughs> like, I don't care what that lady said, you know? <laughs> and it was funny. It was kind of like everything she spoke, I was like, that's not me. Like if she was saying like how I'm so closed off and, and I'm like, no lady, you know what I've been through? Like, no, I am so open right now to love and everything like, no. Some things you're saying are cool, but mm -mm. the journey I just went through, you looking at a completely, totally different person. So not completely different. You have my moments and things of that nature, you know. And it can be right there, but <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's, but I think that all this is important in this conversation and kind of knowing and putting it out there for the first time, because even though we're going to come back around to all of this, I think, and have these conversations again, and I know it was a lot to kind of handle in like the first um, session, and I'm glad it kind of went so well. I didn't think that, I don't know, like, I guess because I'm talking to you, and it's kind of like us just talking on the phone or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a little bit easier for me to get into dialect or whatever. But um, I'm not going to hold you too much longer. And of course, I'm going to try to edit this and like do whatever. Um, and of course, put your amazing cooking in the front. And like I said, I hope you come back and have more conversations with me and things of that nature. And um, I did kind of want to end with this, though. Thank you for telling me that God is not going to punish me. And if I have the opportunity to get it right, I think that I'm so about doing that, you know, and um, this journey, this journey that we're recording for the world, I hope that it helps. I really do. I hope that people see that it's okay to be perfectly imperfect. I hope that people see that being perfect never taught you anything. I hope that people see that There are real women out here, like beyond what's being said on TV, like we've lost people and we deal with a lot of loss and like my brother gang bangers and you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, you know, we grew up in like this whole world and I want to do it for us, yeah. for the ones that had it a little bit harder, you know? It's okay to talk about the surface stuff, but the deep stuff that no one talks about, that's what I want to do it. Oh, and then um, I think you also, the other day you told me you were proud of me. And at one point I kind of questioned that, you know, because <laughs> you would talk about all of us and you would definitely put me in the mix with all the rest of the kids. And I was thinking, <laughs> no, <laughs> like I am going to be, I don't know, you know, but I can't tell you what God put in my heart, but I'm going to show you. And so I hope that in doing this, I've been talking about doing this podcast and having this conversation. And I think it took a minute for me to kind of go the confidence and to just do it. But I want to, um, but I want to relaunch the boutique and, and going through this journey like I said, a lot of people, they don't talk about the different phases of the journey, the triggers and how about how you go through therapy and now you have to deal with all these triggers. And I was telling you how, um, how like I said, like I get attacked all the time, you know, like at work and things like that. I think because just how I look and how I was always kicked back, but I like, that's who we are. We're from San Diego. Everybody's kicked back in San Diego. You know, like, I mean, we hard, but shit, ain't nobody tripping. I mean, what are we getting rushed rush for? We going to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> life is hard, you know, but life ain't hard out there at the same time. You know, it's like really pretty. And I don't know. So I think where a lot of us are kicked back, but I'm in a whole totally different state. So they don't see that. And I think because I'm alone, they don't see this huge family that I have. 
So I thought it was like really important for me not to only tell my story, but for them to tell theirs because their stories are amazing and what they've been through and their journeys and how they've come and how you supported them through all of it. And I think it's really important for you to tell your story. And I've been telling you that for years and giving you stuff to record and you never have. So me pulling you out here to finally get the job done so that we can help so many more amazing people because it's so much bigger than us. Yes, it is. And I thank you for including me on, on your journey and uh, for having me here today. And I will definitely be back and I'll be watching your podcast. And, and I'm really praying that God will lead you and guide you in the right way. And I know he will because his grace is in your life. It's on your life. Um, yeah. He would thank you, Mama. You. I love you. I definitely wanted to end with two things. I wanted to ask you, like, going through that and then seeing it wasn't really, I don't know, going through that and then, you know, watching my brother now and, you know, I wanna, like, how are you dealing with everything and how, how do you feel about me and my journey and how far I've come? And like, do you still worry as much as you do about me at night or are you eased a little bit more seeing me grow to a better person? like? Tell us a little bit from the mother's perspective. Well, yes, I still worry about you. Um, as a matter of fact, this morning at 6.30, I was praying about you. You know, I, I have a regular routine, 7.14 in the morning, 7.14 at night, and 8 o'clock at night at my prayer times. Uh, and uh, then all through the day, but those are particular times that I dedicate to my children, my grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Uh, 714 uh, for this coronavirus and all the things that's going on in the world for addiction, for uh, deliverance. And my prayer this morning was for you, you have been delivered, you have been set free. And in Jesus' name, and I know that to be true for your brothers as well, uh, you're healed, delivered, and set free in the holy name of Jesus. And I speak this by the authority invested in me by Jesus Christ. And so when I'm praying for you, yes, I, I'm concerned, but I'm not worried anymore. And I think I told you that the other day. I'm not worried about you. There was panic nights. There was nights when I couldn't sleep. When I would hear you calling me, literally calling out to me, I heard your voice calling. And uh, it's horrifying to hear you call in the middle of the night. And I can't be there. And all I can do is lay there and pray. I mean, not that prayer is not enough. It's always enough. But that I, you know, couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. It was just, it was just your voice crying out to me and I couldn't answer. Uh, and I couldn't answer. And, but I thank God that, I thank God that, uh, you know, that you've grown to the point. I'll always worry. Oh, I take that back. I won't worry. I'll always be concerned because I'm a mother and because my children are troubled. And uh, so I'll always be that. But I don't think it's, it's not the terror of night anymore. And that's a good place, you know, for me. Um, I can go to sleep at night. You know, and I don't wake up with the cold sweats and all that. It's what's happening, you know. I'm not, I'm not horrified for Corey. I'm at a good place with that. And I just thank God for that. And so, yes, I am proud of you, very proud of you. I, I, I love your journey. I love that. I'm sorry you had to go through it, but you had to go through it so you can come through it, if that makes yeah. sense. You had to. And now, you know, and it was a time when I was going through it that I couldn't even accept that. The therapist asked me, what was I proud of myself about? And I just shook my head like nothing. <laughs> I couldn't even hear that people were proud of me or wanted to love me. I couldn't, this wasn't, I was too overwhelmed. It wasn't getting in. Um, 
I am about to let you go, but um, I was talking to you the other day, and this is another conversation I want to have with you later. Like my longtime friend got a little bit upset at me because I was telling her, I think I said it wrong. You know, like I wasn't trying to say like, don't put God first or anything. What I was trying to say is that when you have, when you're so overwhelmed and you're so, you've gone through so much and you're turning spiritually, but God put people in this earth like therapists and things of that nature. Spiritual can only take you so far. I think that if you want to heal overall, you need to do the, all of the work. Going spiritual is fine, which we'll have a conversation though, because I know you're a pastor, so I know this probably. But <clears throat> like my brother went spiritual, but he needs to go inner. You know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, I'm not saying that like, of course, like it's okay for me to go very spiritual now, but I wouldn't able to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. stuff mm -hmm. wouldn't sit, stuff sits a lot better now that I'm able to absorb it. You know what I mean? Like when I was so afraid and so these things, even God speaking to me wasn't getting in. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, I think she got upset at me. <clears throat> and I know it's a conversation that we'll have later, but I just want people to know that God is amazing, but he put people like me, like, you know, like therapists, like, you like pastors and you know like other people because sometimes you need to let it go so that you can receive it basically yeah yes very well said very well yeah said. and then the last thing we're going to end with <laughs> we were having a conversation about generational curses and things of this nature. And when I would cause you crying about the people attacking me and all of that and how I had went through so much and you know how it was triggering me and how I didn't want to go backwards, you know, but um, how that, you know, I had had a moment or two or whatever. And I was telling you that, you know, I was like, you know, it's okay. You know, like I didn't listen to God and it's cool, you know, if like, things don't happen a certain way or whatever. And you were saying, no, you know, that was a part of things that we have gone through in the past and it didn't just start with me, you know? And so I think it's important too to, um, I, you know, I think it's important to let people know that we're gonna touch on a lot of different bases, not just, it won't just all mental health. Like uh, me and Corey wanna sit down and um, do, uh, the next thing we'll probably do is like a, um, a vision board. You know what I mean? Like if you want to start your life over, the good thing to do is put it on paper. So me and Corey probably sit down live and, and do that. I think she's going to say her name on TV. <laughs> but yeah, um, so I did want you to talk a little bit about the generational curses and like kind of say what you spoke over my life. And then I'll kind of let you in with that. And just thank you for everything. Well, there are generational curses. And, um, and it's been just very recent that I recognized, but actually Belinda, bless her heart, she's gone now, uh, talked to me about this book, it's called Pigs in the Parlor. And I got the book and I read it and it's all about generational curses and how uh, one generation can be affected by one thing and then it skip a generation and the next generation, stuff like that. And so I recognize in that, that my family had a generational curse. And I've been trying to go back to see where it started from. As far as I can go back, it's my dad. But I can definitely see where it has come from, from him. Then in talking to other relatives, they can go back a little further than my dad on my mom's side. Uh, my grandmother actually died when my mother was four years old. Um, but I think there was some, uh, well, she died from pneumonia. Uh, she, but anyway, that's a whole different story. We'll talk about that later. But the generational curses are real. And to break them, there has to be a point at, in 
that we realize that, that there's a curse in our lives. And I'll tell you this curse that this lady spoke on me when I could not have been more than 10 years old. And it's something that I, I didn't think about. You know, you're 10, 11 years old. You're walking down. Yeah. yeah. And I was walking down the street and I was coming. We had this good friend. His name was Mr. Davis. He had a barber shop and he would cut my brother's hair and we would go hang out at the barber shop. I was leaving his house and I was headed home. And this old lady, for some reason, I have no earthly idea, spoke a curse on me. I didn't recognize it. She looked at me and I'm, she's on one side of the street. I'm on another side of the street. And I'm a girl. I'm a little girl. And she looks at me and she says, you're going to always have problems with me. She said, you always have problems with men. Yeah, I'm a little girl, 10 or 11 years old. I never thought about it. And I just looked at it. I went home and told my mom. And, and my mom wanted to go look her up and beat her up and all this. But the thing of it is, that curse, that was a curse that she had put on me. She as looked a, like, she sounded like she was, <laughs> she sounded like she was yucky. <laughs> so when I worked, uh, 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 um, you know, I'm a girl, so I don't know how old she was, but she, she was an old lady. So why would she curse her child? So, but that's what she did. So now that I recognize that, now I know how to deal with it. So now that has come back up into my spirit. And when I'm going through this soul searching, I can, tra I can trace that back to that day, that bright sunny afternoon in the summertime for this old lady that I didn't even know, didn't even know me. Yeah cursed a child, but I lived under that curse until Belinda gave me that book, Pigs in the Parlor, How to Break Generational Curses. So that's what came to mind. And so, and that's the curse I was telling you that I, that we have to pray off of you and the, all the females in the family because she literally cursed me. Yeah. With that, that evil curse. Well, I feel like, you know, you and kind of broke it. I mean, I know a lot of the women in our family aren't, but I pray for, I pray about it now too, you know, and marriage 2021 for me, I don't know. I just try to speak, <laughs> it, but you know, I just try not to say it anymore because it's weird because people like, there's different beliefs. Some people like speak it out loud often. So you'll get it done. Some people say, speak it and let it go so that you can receive it. So I don't know. Well, I and putting it in the atmosphere. I believe in speaking it into the atmosphere. I believe in calling those things that, that are not as though they were. Yeah. So you're, you're saying marriage 2021 20, for me, it's in your heart, it's in your mind. And, and that's where truth is. That's how it comes out. So yeah. we have to say it, we have to believe it to receive it. Yeah. So I, I don't have a problem with that. Speaking in that. Well, and I think they say sometimes you have to like, I was listening to T.D. Jakes and he was saying, <laughs> sometimes it wasn't the people where you trying to fit into this small box, like you're too great, you know what I mean? Like you're, where you're trying to go, people can't see. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, why are you trying to fit into their little small box when they can't even see your big box or whatever, you know, like, but it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's so important to, I don't know, I, I'll be confused on like some of the stuff because it's kind of like, who's belief, you know what I mean? Like some people believe keeping it quiet manifests it a little bit more. Some people believe speaking into existence. Abraham Sex says, Abraham Hicks says, speak it into existence, but talk about it in a roundabout way so that you're not always speaking on it because you don't want your vibrational energy to go down behind it. I don't know. So I guess it just depends on. Well, let me leave with, with this. Mark, the 11th chapter, the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th verse says, have faith in God. That's the 22nd verse. Whoever should say to this mountain, we're talking about speak. Whoever can say to this mountain, be thy removed and be thy cast in the sea, and should have no doubt. The Bible says they should have whatever they say. And when you say it and you believe it and you pray on it, you should have whatever you say. And it says, if you have all against any, 
so that your father who are in heaven will forgive you, then you must forgive. So if you want the things that you say to come into existence, you gotta have that faith in God. I, I learned a long time ago that I couldn't say a lot of stuff out of my mouth because it's almost like if I say it, it's going to happen. So I have to learn how to write on my tongue and, and I work on that all the time. But I'm like you, the Bible says, speak it. God spoke the world into existence. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? So he wants us to speak, but we have to be wise. We can't be like Joseph who uh, God gave him the vision to let him know that he was going to be this great man one day. But he told his brothers who was against him. So they got this envy and they, they really hated him for his vision. But the vision still came true. It's just that it, it took him longer. So be careful what you say and who you say it to, but you always speak it. You don't have to speak it like I'm in the office by myself. I can speak whatever I want to say. And I still, I'm still speaking it into existence. But I'm not offending anyone. You know, when, I, uh, when I'm up in the yeah, morning. Yeah, I kind of see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, and it kind of answers like, well, I don't know if it answers my question because I was thinking to myself, Corey brought up a very good point the other day. And I don't want her to stray because of it because she was saying, if God already knows your path why would he dim you to you know what i'm saying if he chose that path for you or if he created this path for you why would you them be dim for the path and i was like you know you're right about that you know so you know that was another thing that man could have put in there to you know but it's kind of like there are some things that are contradicting but um but let me answer that well, question for her before you leave because he gave us freedom of choice he gave us choices. Yeah. You know, remember when he, when Adam and Eve was in the garden, and I'm not going to preach, but uh, when he was in, they were in the garden and he told them, you can freely have any, any fruit in this garden, except I don't want you to eat off this one fruit. So they made Except the, what? He didn't want them to eat from this one particular tree, the tree of good and evil. He didn't want, that wasn't, that he didn't want them to do that. So when they did yeah. that, they made a conscious choice. They made a conscious decision. So that's how we, that's what we do. We make conscious decisions to do things. We make conscious decisions to believe what we want to believe. Well, if God's so good, why would he allow this? Or what did he do to cause it? You know, we, we can walk in the will of God or we can walk outside of the will of God. He's still God. He still loves us. He's going to always forgive us because he's a forgiving, loving God. So the choices that we made, and I told September that this morning, uh, the choices that we make is what get us where we are. And we have a free will to make those choices because when God breathed the breath, breath of life into us, he gave us that choice of free will. Yeah. And now we can choose to walk in his free will or we can choose not to. So usually when we're walking out of the will of God, it's when these problems come on us. Now, I'm not saying that when you're in the will of God, things are not going to happen because life is not easy. But if we never went through it, we'd never know that he could solve it. Yeah. But you see how it's stuff can kind of be contradicting? Because then I heard Joe Austin say there was a whore or whatever, and that's how she lived her life. But when she went to wash God's feet, he didn't judge her. Taking one step towards God, she said, he said, you're cleansed of all your sins. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I said, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, but I get where she's coming from because it's kind of like, if he, even if he gave you the, the you're saying if he gave you the choice, you gave you the, the free will of choice, but he still knows your path and he knew you're going to make that bad choice. Why still condemn you? But it's kind of true. We condemn ourselves. All he asks us to do is ask him. When we fall, ask him to forgive us and get up. And then he's faithful to throw it in the sea of forgetfulness. He's not going to remember. But you know what happens is we remember. So we keep bringing it up. When actually it's over and done with. But we don't know that. Yeah. So, and, and so that's... 
and and I and I can see where you see the contradiction. But now, as you think about when she washed Jesus' feet, in those days it was customary because remember they didn't have shoes and socks and stuff like we did. They had sandals, and, you know, and and it was a dusty town. So and that was customary. But she did it in preparation for his burial, for his crucifixion. So he oh he was I think he was talking about another story, but he was just saying oh it could have been though I'm not sure it was just in one of his pre he was one of his okay. sermons and I probably only got the thirty minutes I listened to on YouTube yeah but, but yeah thank you Mama well you most certainly welcome thank you for having oh me. and the general location the general rational curse that you said we're breaking is that the women in our family will have an abundance of we will be married also. It won't just yes. be the men in our family that are married. We will have that family and, and also able to grow and prosper with our men and stay in there and stick in there. Yes. Which I think is really cool because that's mm -hmm. what I'm, you know, knowing is gonna happen for me because I'm so able to make it happen. But I'm hoping with this blog and this conversation, it reaches certain people and I'm hoping that, um, people will come and it won't just be a conversation. Like today was a conversation because I kind of just wanted it to, to kick it off, you know, and my mom is not here and we're still trying to figure everything out, but you're gonna pull us up on us. We're gonna be in the kitchen. We're gonna talk about these reality shows. We're gonna talk about the dream work that Tamar just did. Like we're gonna, we're gonna put all these things into having fun and having this fun conversation. I just wanted to put it out there on a serious note and kind of open up the conversation um, this way because I thought it was really important for my mom to be my first guest and she's not able to be here. And also I kind of just wanted to frame and structure it. Like people let people know that it is it's going to be a serious conversation and we're going to talk about very important things but it definitely it won't be like it's going to be controversial i'm going to bring people on here i'm like why you do that to me no i'm kidding <laughs> why you do that mama <laughs> 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 I'm <laughs> but i'm just saying you know like we're gonna have fun and we're gonna it's, it's gonna be light and we're always gonna be cooking so foodies join us um you know younger people old people people of the community you know there are so many people that people don't know their stories and there's so many good role models out here and we want to bring everyone to the table and we have all these questions joe Osti, all my friends who have going through all to all these my friends i've been going to my friends got all these advice tyler perry and all these people we need answers we got questions i don't know they may not want to answer my questions <laughs> they're gonna be like lord <laughs> I ain't gonna write a whole new sermon. <laughs> but um, yeah, Mama, thank you so much. And I hope it wasn't overwhelming for the first time. And I know this has to get edited and things of that nature, but I kind of felt like it was a cool conversation. I kind of just let, wanted to let it ride the way that it happened. Um, I definitely want to edit your cooking into it and things of that nature. So I think I have it where we're gonna do it maybe twice a month right now, but um, I guess we'll see. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm planning on opening the boutique um, on Corey's birthday. I figured rebirth, rebirth, and since everything is coming new, and um, we pretty much have given ourselves one year for everything to be different and to pretty much, you know, let's see where we go and let's take this journey and let's help other people and I hope people will join in and come get, you know, I'm not gonna say it's help. I'm not gonna say it's anything. I'm just gonna say it's a conversation and I hope that people will join the conversation and I hope that it helps. And I hope that people that are, hold on, you know, hold on, hold on. One more day, you know, people don't have to pick up that gun. You're not alone, you know? Hold on. We have a whole community that we have to help and that there's a lot on my heart and 
I don't know how I'm gonna get there. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. But I didn't know how I was gonna get here. But I told God that we would at the beginning of the year. And it's happening. So I hope that we already got the family consent. We know that <laughs> who's the favorite. <laughs> Well, I'm sure that'll be on here a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I thank you, Mama. I thank you. I thank you on so many levels. I thank you for being my mother. I know that there are so many wonderful stories that people would love to hear from you. And that, yeah, let's see where we are one year from now. It won't even be one year, more like 11 months. All right. So, yeah. Well, again, I think <laughs> it won't happen. It won't happen. I don't know, but I'm excited. And I'm excited to relaunch. And um, definitely your Bible study on Sunday. I mean, no, church on Sunday, Bible study on Fridays at 7.30. Seven. And we'll put a link so that you okay. guys can, um, yeah, tune into that. And yeah. Thank you, Mama. You're welcome. Is there anything that you want to say before we leave? I want to thank you again for having me as your guest, and I want to thank you for this journey that you're going on, and I want to encourage you to keep it going. You know, don't give up, keep it going, because there is a vision there, and you have to walk in your vision, you have to walk in your calling, and who knows, this might be your calling. No, and so I'm going to tell you, I give up every other week, but my daughter won't let me, and she says, I can't, and um. <laughs> And I heard Tyler Perry say something so cool. And he said that when you are too weak, when you can't carry yourself, let your dream carry you. Let your family, let, you know what I mean? Let whatever you need to, but just get up the next day. Just all you do is get up the next day. You know, keep walking. I mean, you get up, you might as well do something. <laughs> yes so, that's the way I look at it some days I may not want to do nothing some days I may be like you know what not today <laughs> I'm gonna go and <laughs> but you know I'm trying let me know to what you want, what, what, let me know when you want me to start cooking what give me a week to prepare a really good meal and I don't know if you want to do a dish or a meal but whatever Definitely. Thank you. And it'll help us to also write this recipe book that we've been trying to do. I've been trying to get you guys to do a family recipe book forever. So would you guys put in a recipe on my either blog or something every week? Guess what we can do after that? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, put it all together and make a book. Um, so yeah, actually, there's so many great things that we're about to do. Not only me, but I'm doing this for my family and for the, the community. So thank you. That's, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to end. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I'm excited for the journey. And I thank you for taking it with me. And I thank my daughter who's over here. You want to say bye to Granny? I mean, bye to you. Yes. Woo. That's a conversation in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mommies, we need that conversation, right? <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. And it is going to be okay. All right. And we will figure this set out a little bit better. I mean, it worked out. I guess we figured it out a little bit, but I'm pretty sure there's a better way we can go about doing this. Maybe my cameraman won't leave me next time. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you moderate. Beautiful daughter. Love you. My hair all braided up. Look, she braided her hair. Good. I was just. I don't know how to do this. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but yeah, she's so okay. funny, Mama. Don't forget Keelan's birthday next when week. When she's not being mean. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's not being mean. Oh my God. But yeah, all I right. love you. I love and you. And I'll talk to you a little bit later. Okay. And yeah, if you want to start thinking about the next meal, I was thinking about doing some lasagna, so maybe I'll call you. Okay. Oh, Corey, here. <laughs> here, Corey. 
<laughs> that taco soup? Yeah, taco soup. I'll do it. It's a good <laughs> time of year for it. Yes. Okay, cool, Mama. I love you. I look forward to talking to you soon. Okay, love you too. Love you more. So Bye. Love you, Granny. Bye, Mama. Bye. So I'm ending the recording now. Okay, send it to me. Okay, if I don't know how, you might have to log in and do it for yourself. Okay. All right. Did it record the whole thing? I think so. It said it recorded two hours and 18 minutes. Oh my God, did we talk that long? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can break it up into three parts. Yeah. Okay, do it however you need to. Just, yeah. just make me look better. Well, at least we have the first one take. <laughs> what do you say? That's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. All right. Love you. Thank you, Mama. I love you. Talk to you guys soon. Okay. All right. Bye bye.